get your breakfast. You'll be late for work. Did you water the lawn? The lawn watered me. <laughs> What's for breakfast? Well, I'll have your eggs in a minute. Here's your toast. You stuck again. I told your father we needed a new toaster. Here, I'll, I'll fix it for you. Spring stuck. Yeah. Stand back. That's a switch. Yeah, they told me that bread was chock full of vitamins, but I didn't think that many. <laughs> Glamorous You, the magazine for modern women. Mom, what are you reading that stuff for? You got enough glamour for me. Oh, thank you, Michael. I'm glad you think so. Sometimes I wish your father felt the same way. Pop? Well, you got him hooked, but good. Well, I don't know. Oh, listen, by the way, I'm not going to be home for dinner tonight. Freddie and I are taking the girls down to the beach. Oh, do you think that's wise, Michael? It said in this morning's paper they still haven't caught that phantom beachcomber that's been robbing people and beating them up. Yeah, we don't have to worry about any phantom beachcomber. Freddie and I can take care of them. <laughs> and if we run into any trouble, the girls can help us out. <laughs> that's no laughing matter. The beachcomber's already robbed six victims in the past two weeks. Do you have to go down to the beach tonight? Certainly. The Grunion are running tonight. Grunion? Sure. Oh, that's as good an excuse as any to do a little spooning on the beach. In my day, it was a snipe hunt. But there really are grunion. Yeah, grunion? Yeah. What do they look like? Well, honey, look, they're little silverfish about this long, see? And they come riding in on a wave, they lay their eggs on the beach, they cover them up with sand, and then out with the next wave. Yeah, so it's just like a snipe hunt. <laughs> Eat your pancakes, you cad. Now, look, if you're such a skeptic, why don't you have Pop take you down to the beach? Now you see the grunion for yourself. No, oh, I don't think he'd be interested. Your father doesn't seem to want to take me anywhere lately. That's one of the danger signs. Danger signs? Yeah, there are seven of them. It's in this article, Are You Losing Your Husband? Here, let me see that. Page 37. Hmm, 36, 37, here we are. Are you losing your husband? Seven danger signs. First, has your husband been coming home late for dinner? Two, has he forgotten that hello kiss when he arrives home? Third, does he call you by another woman's name? Four, when you answer the phone, does somebody hang up? Five, when he answers the phone, does he say, not now, I'll call you later? Six, where has he taken you lately, if at all? Seven, are the hairs on his suit and the lipstick on his handkerchief really yours? Well? <laughs> Mom, you can't believe that stuff. <laughs> this pops? Ooh, maybe this is your lipstick. Well, well, maybe Pop found something at the scene of the crime, wrapped the lipstick in the handkerchief to protect the fingerprints. And then... There's got to be some explanation. No, no woman would go for him. I went for him. Oh, I, I didn't mean that that way. I meant well, Bob's not the type to chase women. Ha, ha, ha. In the past month, your father's used up two bottles of hair tonic. You mean he's been drinking it? No, he's been plastering his hair with it to some woman. You can smell him coming a mile away. Look, you're making a big thing out of nothing. Look, I got to get going. I'll be late. Bye. Oh, uh... My advice to you is to throw the magazine away and, and keep pop. <laughs> oh, dear. I forgot your eggs. Who in this house likes 10 minutes soft-boiled eggs? Seen in that car. Good morning, darling. How's my best girl? Oh, so it's you. For a moment, I thought it was the incinerator. Well, there you go, belittling my hair tonic again. It's done wonders for my hair. Everybody says so. Everybody? Who's she? Hey, what's with you? This is with me. Well, that's my handkerchief. Oh, so you admit it. Now, I won't have to send it to the crime lab. Sure, it's my handkerchief. There's my initial on it. Yeah, and now it's got your fingerprints on it, you masher. Masher? Now, what's eating you? I'm willing to give you a chance to explain this lipstick smudge. The law states that every man is entitled to a fair trial. Hey, where did you get this handkerchief? Where you hid it. 
in the laundry bag. Well, sure, I hide everything in my laundry bag. My shirt, my shorts, my socks. I'm just a sneaky type, I guess. You've got an explanation. You better come up with it quick. Well, I've got an explanation. You borrowed somebody else's lipstick, then you borrowed my handkerchief, then you... you... You'll never sell that to a jury. Oh, for the love of Patty, I give up. Where's my breakfast now? <laughs> pick you up at 6.30. You bring the mustard, Audrey will bring the buns, Freddie will bring the relish, oh, Just a minute, Mickey. I started to tell you I can't go tonight. Can't go? Why, why, Pat, we've planned this whole thing for a week now. Well, I don't want to break the date, but this is business. They've decided to make a Kenny of the new mystery show tonight, and Mr. Brown wants me to be there to take notes. A Kenny means more than I do, huh? Well, it's, it's good to know. Now, Mickey, don't be childish. It's my job. After all, it's only one night out of the year. We have tomorrow night, and every night after that. Oh, but tomorrow night the grunion won't be running. At least you can count on a grunion. Wait a minute, we can still go. Pat doesn't care if you take another girl, do you, Pat? Not at all. I'm not narrow-minded like Mickey is. In fact, I've gone to the trouble to make a date for you, Mickey. You've made a date for me? Who with? Oh, nobody you know. She's a new switchboard operator they've just hired. She'll be here in a minute. She's lots of fun. Pat, aren't you taking an awful chance? I mean, there's, there's going to be a full moon tonight, and it's awful romantic down at Hidden Cove. Well, I trust you, even if you don't trust me. Oh! Pat, you didn't. Sorry, I thought this was Mr. Lester's office. False alarm. That was Mrs. Lester. Tough luck, old man. The grunion would have loved it. And they sounded awfully eager for a man who isn't interested in other girls. I just thought she'd be a good girl to bring the mustard. Hi. Hello, Bobo. Well, where, where is he? Which one's Mickey? Oh, Bobo Barton, I'd like you to meet Freddie Devlin. Freddie? Michael. Nice to have met you. Hey, but what about our date? Date? Yeah, I don't go out on blind dates. Good, then it's all settled. No date. Well, of course there's a date, but you've got to ask me first. I'm a lady. I don't go out on dates unless the fellow asks me himself. Now, you ask me and I'll consider it. I might say yes and I might say no. I'm sorry, I don't believe in gambling. <laughs> you do have a sense of humor. Oh, you're all right. Patty's short, but he's very funny. We can't let the grunion down. Go ahead and ask her. Well, sir, we were uh, just going to go down for a grunion hunt. Huh? Grunion hunt? Yeah. How romantic. Well, maybe you probably have something better to do, so you can't go, huh? Well, I, I did have another date, but I could break it. It was just a judo class. J judo? Grunion hunting. Okay, it's a date. Oh, Pat, thanks very much for lending me your boyfriend, and I'll take very good care of him. <laughs> See you later, funny man. This is Officer Mulligan. I'm calling from the 23rd Precinct. I understand you had a little trouble at your home this morning. I'm busy, Joe. I thought you might like to know we apprehended the man that caused the trouble this morning. He 
He's confessed that he's sorry, and if you let him off with a light sentence, he'd like to take you out to dinner tonight. Well, really, Joe, I... And after that, I thought we might go dancing or take in a show or go on a little snipe hunt. It sounds awfully exciting, but I don't know. Now, we just got an alert over the teletype. There's going to be a full moon. In that case, officer, I'd like to withdraw any complaint I might have had. Good, I'll be home right after work. Goodbye, darling. May I cut in? Oh, well, hello, Captain. I was just... Uh... Yeah, I know. I get spells like that myself every once in a while. Uh, Mulligan, what are you doing tonight? No, uh, tonight, nothing. I mean, oh, yes, yeah, something. Uh, well, uh, Snyder's sick, and I remember that he filled in for you when you went on that fishing trip a couple of months ago, remember? So, uh, would you take over for him tonight? Tonight? But, Captain, I was going to take Nell out tonight. Yeah, well, Nell will understand. You just call her up, tell her you got to work, huh? Captain, I don't believe in divorce. Who said anything about divorce? She will when I call her up. Mulligan, you're a police officer. Your duty comes first. Oh, but, Captain, Stop I... Stop quibbling. You're taking Snyder's place on a stakeout tonight. We gotta catch the Phantom Beachcomber right away. The papers are gonna make it awfully hot for us. Beachcomber held up two more couples last night. Beat one up pretty bad. All right, what do you want me to do? Well, the Chief's got a new plan that might work. We're gonna station two officers in plain clothes at the beach where the Beachcomber usually operates. Maybe with that kind of bait, we can sucker them in. That might work at that. Well, I might as well call Nell and get it over with. By the way, who am I gonna work with? Sergeant Rogers. Sergeant Rogers? Oh, no. Can't you get somebody else? Sergeant Rogers, would you come in here, please? Yes, Captain. It's all set, Sergeant. You and Mulligan here are going to work that stake out tonight. Oh, I'm sure Mulligan and I will get along very well. All right, you better get down to Hidden Cove about uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, Mulligan, uh, don't forget to call your wife. Oh, married officer Mulligan? I am. Until she picks up that phone. <laughs> There's any place as wonderful as Hidden Cove. Yeah. When did the Grannians start running? Oh, about an hour. Happy? Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see Mickey's having a good time, too. Yeah. Bobo! Bobo! You're breaking my arm! Now you're beginning to catch on. You'll have this hole perfected in no time. Bully for me. Isn't this more fun than necking? You don't break your neck necking. Well, let's try the full Nelson. Oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Look, no full Nelson, please, please. I don't know you that well. This is only our first date. Mickey, you don't want me to be ashamed of you when I take you to Muscle Beach, do you? <laughs> no, easy. Oh, oh, not hold the, hold the neck. Hey, kids, come on, let's see. My boy, hold. Oh. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, it certainly is a lovely evening, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. Gee, on a night like this, uh, you mean to tell me you didn't uh, bring girl with you? <laughs> no, I didn't. Do you want one? <laughs> no, thanks. I just came down to sketch the seascape. Oh. It's real dramatic on a night like this. Yes, it is. It is beautiful. Is that a picture of that? Certainly. Don't you think you ought to put a little foam on the bananas? Hey, Freddy, what happened to the Grunion? Don't worry, they'll be here. Hey, Mick, who's the character? I don't know, he says he's an artist, but he's strictly from Never Never Land. Well, come on. I brought the bun. I brought the mustard. I brought the mustard. Well, Mick? Mustard. 
Mustard? <laughs> At least we won't run out of mustard. <laughs> Wasn't somebody supposed to bring the weenies? They certainly were. Who's not here? Vicky, you were supposed to bring the weenies. I was not, Freddie. Look, we all had our assignments. Why can't we remember? Look, Audrey, you were supposed to bring the buns, Freddie, the mustard, Bobo, the relish, and me. <laughs> I got something else in here. Mustard. Potter Mile. You won't need that gun. I've got one. I'll keep it just the same. I've never been on a beach party with you before. Very funny. Ha, ha, ha. What's in the bag? The weenies. I didn't have any dinner. Hey, do you think this plan will really work? Of course it will. I've done work like this before during the war. I was a woman for the FBI. <laughs> well, let's face it, somebody goofed. Please, let's sound off again. Audrey. Fun. Freddy. Mustard. Bobo. Bobo, what were you supposed to bring, please? You. But I wish I'd brought the weenies instead. Mick, why don't you admit it? You dropped the ball, so we can't eat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I just saw a man and a woman come down over there. Maybe we can borrow some of their weenies. Yeah. It's worth a try. Keep the home fires burning. I'll be right back with weenies. <laughs> Move in closer. I want to show you this sketch. It's a composite of the description of the Phantom Beachcomber. I'm close enough, and I've seen the sketch. We've got to memorize every detail. Here, let's pull a blanket over our heads. We don't want to attract any attention with this light. <laughs> What are you doing here? That's a good question. Who is this woman? We'll ask the questions here, and no tricks. This is Sergeant Rogers, son. A likely story. All right, Mulligan, let's take him in and book him. This is my son, Michael. I feel sorry for you, Mulligan. Pop, what are you doing with this, this gun mall? I'm a police officer, and you're under arrest. Now, Sergeant, let's not lose our heads. This is my son. He couldn't possibly be the beachcomber. Why not? He looks close enough to this sketch. See, the... The beady eyes and the low forehead. It's convincing enough for me. Now, look, miss, you can't count on sketches. I just saw a sketch over there of the ocean that looked like bananas and apples. <laughs> what do you mean, beady eyes? <laughs> Let me go! Audrey! There's your beach, Cromer. Come on! <laughs> oh, oh, gee! Mickey! Gee, I'm sorry! Wow. Whose side are you on? What, what happened to Freddy? Well, this character slugged him from behind, and then he grabbed Audrey's on him, and Look, they... let's go get him. You go that way. Okay. <laughs> Which way did he go? Oh, Freddy. Which way did he go? Oh, I don't know. That way, I think. <laughs> Say, pardon me. Did you, did you see a fellow in a black hood and a baseball cap come running by this way? I didn't see a thing. Too busy working. <laughs> You're breathing kind of hard. I didn't know that sketching was that tough. Yeah, yeah, it takes a lot out of you. You sure you didn't see any commotion or hear anything? You, uh, this fellow in the black hood and baseball cap, he knocked my friend out. You didn't see anything or hear anything? 
When I'm working, I'm oblivious to everything. I, uh, I see you've added a grapefruit. I'd like to be left alone. I'm, I'm sorry, I just thought... Oh, look out, the tide's coming. Here comes the tide. Hey, give me that bag. Hey, look, this is a big beach. Why don't you leave me alone? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hey, Bobo. What are you doing? The Grunion, they landed. I saw them. Did you catch any? No, they're too slippery. They got away. Well, never mind about the Grunion anyway. Listen, I've got that beachcomber character cornered. No kidding. Yeah, it was that artist. You can practice your judo on him. Well, then leave me to him. No, wait just a minute. we got to check our signals. I'll stand on one side of him. You stand on the other, see? And when I say, that's a pretty picture, that's your cue, and you flip him over your back, and I'll jump on him. You got it? I flip him, you jump him, got it. Sick him. Oh. Well, <laughs> what do you know? Sure is a pretty picture. Yes, sir, it sure is. <laughs> it's a very pretty picture. I agree with you. Okay, you guys want to play cops and robbers? Okay, let's play. Okay, Mickey. Hi, low. stated that he is a happily married man and that his tryst with the glamorous Sergeant Rogers was all on the line of duty. Sergeant Rogers corroborated his testimony with a playful kiss on the ear. And here's our final picture of the dramatic capture of the Phantom Beachcomber. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Michael. How's my hero this morning? Good and hungry. Now, do you believe they're a grunion? Oh, I believe they're a grunion, all right, but that's not the only thing that smells fishy to me. Read all about it. The Mulligan men lived a little last night. That's Sergeant Rogers. Wow. And on the line of duty, too. And don't bother to applaud. We heroes are modest guys. But what are you feeding the talk of the town this morning? Well, you're not going to start this again. I'm willing to swallow your story about Sergeant Rogers, but there's still Exhibit A that needs an explanation. Ned, you can't convict me on circumstantial evidence. Now, I've told you I haven't the faintest idea how this lipstick got on this handkerchief. Well, morning, morning, everybody. Morning, Hello. I want to ride to work with the talk of the town. Oh, Mickey, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Oh, Pat, watch the lipstick in this house. It could be a dangerous weapon. <laughs> how did you like Bobo? Was I wrong about her being a lot of fun? She shouldn't be allowed out of the ring. <laughs> Mom. Mom, come here, please. What is it, Michael? I think I just got pop off the hook. Look at the smudges on this handkerchief. This is the one I just wiped off. This is the one that convicted pop. They're both the same. Aha, uh -huh. so it was Pat's lipstick, and you've been swiping my handkerchiefs again. I'm sorry, Pop. It was just a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> Well, now. <laughs> Mickey, what's all this about? Glamorous you just lost a subscriber. <laughs> and that was the good word from the folks who bring you our next adventure. I hope we can count on you being with us. Until then, oh, excuse me. Oh, take a bow. <laughs> Good night. Good night.
This pops? Ooh, maybe this is your lipstick. Well, well, maybe Pop found something at the scene of the crime, wrapped the lipstick in the handkerchief to protect the fingerprints. And then... Well, there's got to be some explanation. No, no woman would go for him. I went for him. Oh, I, I didn't mean that that way. I meant well, Pop's not the type to chase women. Ha, ha, ha. In the past month, your father's used up two bottles of hair tonic. You mean he's been drinking it? No, he's been plastering his hair with it to some woman. You can smell him coming a mile away. Look, you're making a big thing out of nothing. Look, I gotta get going. I'll be late. Bye. Oh, uh, my advice to you is to throw the magazine away and, and keep pop. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Who in this house likes 10 minutes soft-boiled eggs? I'm gonna have to stop using kerosene in that car. Good morning, darling. How's my best girl? Oh, so it's you. For a moment, I thought it was the incinerator. Well, there you go, belittling my hair tonic again. It's done wonders for my hair. Everybody says so. Everybody? Who's she? Hey, what's... I'll fix it for you. Spring stuck. Yeah. Stand back. Ow, 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 ow. That's a switch. Yeah, they told me that bread was chock full of vitamins, but I didn't think that many. <laughs> Glamorous You, the magazine for modern women. Mom, what are you reading that stuff for? You got enough glamour for me. Oh, thank you, Michael. I'm glad you think so. Sometimes I wish your father felt the same way. Pop? Well, you got him hooked, but good. Well, I don't know. Oh, listen, by the way, I'm not going to be home for dinner tonight. Freddie and I are taking the girls down to the beach. Oh, do you think that's wise, Michael? It said in this morning's paper they still haven't caught that phantom beachcomber that's been robbing people and beating them up. Yeah, we don't have to worry about any phantom beachcomber. Freddie and I can take care of it at 6.30. You bring the mustard, Audrey will bring the buns, Freddie will bring the relish, oh, Just a minute, Mickey. I started to tell you I can't go tonight. I can't go? Why, why, Pat, we planned this whole thing for a week now. Well, I don't want to break the date, but this is business. They've decided to make a Kenny of the new mystery show tonight, and Mr. Brown wants me to be there to take notes. A Kenny means more than I do, huh? Well, it's, it's good to know. Now, Mickey, don't be childish. It's my job. After all, it's only one night out of the year. We have tomorrow night, and every night after that. Oh, but tomorrow night the Grunion won't be running. At least you can count on a grunion. Wait a minute. We can still go. Pat doesn't care if you take another girl. Do you, Pat? Not at all. I'm not narrow-minded like Mickey is. In fact, I've gone to the trouble to make a date for you, Mickey. You've made a date for me? Who with? Oh, nobody you know. She's a new switchboard operator they've just hired. She'll be here in a minute. She's lots of fun. Pat, aren't you taking an awful chance? I mean, there's, there's going to be a full moon tonight, and... It's awful romantic down at Hidden Cove. Well, I trust you, even if you don't trust me. Oh! Pat, you didn't. Sorry, I thought this was Mr. Lester's office. False alarm. That was Mrs. Lester. Tough luck, old man. The Grunion would have loved it. It sounded awfully eager for a man who isn't interested in other girls. It's with you. This is with me. 
Well, that's my handkerchief. Oh, so you admit it. Now, I won't have to send it to the crime lab. Sure, it's my handkerchief. There's my initial on it. Yeah, and now it's got your fingerprints on it, you masher. Masher? Nell, what's eating you? I'm willing to give you a chance to explain this lipstick smudge. The law states that every man is entitled to a fair trial. Hey, where did you get this handkerchief? Where you hid it. In the laundry bag. Well, sure, I hide everything in my laundry bag. My shirt, my shorts, my socks. I'm just a sneaky type, I guess. You've got an explanation. You better come up with it quick. Well, I've got an explanation. You borrowed somebody else's lipstick, then you borrowed my handkerchief, then you... you... You'll never sell that to a jury. Oh, for the love of Patty, I give up. Where's my breakfast now? <laughs> any trouble, the girls can help us out. <laughs> That's no laughing matter. The beachcomb has already robbed six victims in the past two weeks. Do you have to go down to the beach tonight? Certainly. The Grunion are running tonight. Grunion? Sure. Oh, it's a good an excuse as any to do a little spooning on the beach. And my day, it was a snipe hunt. But there really are Grunion. Yeah, Grunion? Yeah. What do they look like? Well, honey, look, they're little silverfish about this long, see? And they come riding in on a wave, they lay their eggs on the beach, they cover them up with sand, and then... Out with the next wave. Yeah, so it's just like a snipe hunt. <laughs> Eat your pancakes, you cad. Now look, if you're such a skeptic, why don't you have Pop take you down to the beach? Now you see the grunion for yourself. No, oh, I don't think he'd be interested. Your father doesn't seem to want to take me anywhere lately. That's one of the danger signs. Danger signs? Yeah, there are seven of them. It's in this article, Are You Losing Your Husband? Here, let me see that. Page 37. Hmm, 36? 37, here we are. Are you losing your husband? The seven danger signs. First, has your husband been coming home late for dinner? Two, has he forgotten that hello kiss when he arrives home? Third, does he call you by another woman's name? Four, when you answer the phone, does somebody hang up? Five, when he answers the phone, does he say, not now, I'll call you later? Six, where has he taken you lately, if at all? Seven, are the hairs on his suit and the lipstick on his handkerchief really yours? Well? <laughs>